done. Good? Yeah. Alright. I'm Ward, this is Jeff, and we're from uh, Max and Life. That's a show that we put together a couple of years ago. We did a, a, a uh, basically the same talk last year at PodCamp. Uh, we had a lot of positive feedback about it, so we decided we'd do it again. Um, I guess we'll, it's just easier to get started. First question everybody says is, what do I need in order to do a video podcast? Right? Mm-hmm. So, you need Mountain Dew, trust me. That, you know, yes. Everything absolutely. Else. You need lots and lots of caffeine. You need an idea. You need something that is, I guess, replicable. Something that you want to take and you want to make a thousand episodes or whatever. Or, conversely, you could say, well, this is my one niche thing, and I want to show somebody how to whittle toothpicks. And I'm only going to make one episode, so you would plan for, for that. But the first thing is you have to have the idea. The next thing you have to do is have passion for it. Because the people that you're making your, present, your show for are going to see whether or not you have the passion because they can see it in your face. Yeah, they can see how excited you are during your presentation, during your, you know, your explanation, whatever. If you don't have a passion for what you're doing, you're going to you're going to burn out in a month with no problem. Because there's a month would be pushing. I mean, it's if you don't have if you really don't love what you're doing, you're not going to enjoy doing it over and over again. Because when we get into editing and whatnot, you're going to see yourself 50 times on that episode. When you're editing and cutting and you're what hear yourself, and you're going to be hearing yourself over and over and over again. And if you don't like what you're talking about, <laughs> you're going to get burned out. I mean, that that's simple. Uh, and time, time is huge because you know it, it's real easy to make the time to shoot the episode or to shoot that show. There's a lot of yeah. more time that comes after that, all right? Because then you go into post-production, you know. Well, you have your pre-production, which is where you're going to write your scripts. Or you're going to have what? Yeah, we, we really don't <laughs> use scripts. If, if, you have, if you have these theoretical scripts, yeah, these, you these would probably things. want to, you know, prep them ahead of time. We <laughs> usually just use notes. I mean, really. I, I, I wish I would have brought some with me. Our, our script is like 10 bullet points. And it's like, okay, make sure you talk about these things. Yeah, these are the highlights throughout the week, kind of the same thing we do here. Is here's the bullet points, and then we just kind of make it up as we go along. Well, actually, it's usually him and Chuck. I usually even the one standing behind the camera. And they're like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are the lights done? Are you? Yeah. We'll get into that fun stuff in a minute. <laughs> and the last thing's content. You know, what's going to be about? Exactly. How are you going to have it? You know, uh, uh, for your idea, is it going to be podcast? Is it going to be informational? Is it going to be a for business thing? You know, for work, like here, you guys, your boss said, well, we need to have you explain how to do whatever it is they want you to do that week. Is it going to be a ongoing web series? You know, all, all this stuff comes in your pre plan before you actually start up a camera. You have to be able to answer these questions. Because if not, if, if, you, if you go, you know what, I, passion could be almost erased if you're doing it for business because your passion becomes, I want to get paid. Mm-hmm. Your boss says, job. I want you to, to, to show everybody how to do this. That, I should have put that there, passion slash paid. Because <laughs> some people may not have the passion to do it, but their boss tells them they got to. So that, that kind of is in the change. Of yeah. Is everybody here, you know, anything for work or is this strictly... You want to do this for yourself, so we can kind of get an idea. Everybody's here for themselves, yes? How many actually okay. have their own podcast right now? How many do video? Okay. All right, cool. So everybody's basically at the same place when you start from the ground up. Target audience. Nobody in this room will start off like Leo Laporte. I'll say that right now. You're not going to get 10,000 downloads your first shot. Yeah, he didn't even start off with Leo Laporte. Yeah, he didn't even start off with that. You have to build your audience. Know who your audience is. Yeah. You know, is it just going to be friends? You know, I'm going to shoot some wedding videos. Or I'm going to shoot video of a family gathering. Something like that. 
Some of your friends are going to see it. You know who your target audience is. You know how to prepare Very for important. that target audience. But you know, you could have friends, just people who like cheese. You could say, okay, I'm going to do a cheese blog, and I know that my market, my target audience is people who like cheese. You know, video blogging show. This is bad cheese. You <laughs> stuff, don't eat. The, you know, they don't, don't eat the green stuff. stuff. What do I need to get started? Again, you need my. But you need a location. You want it. If this is going to be an ongoing thing, you kind of want to have like a set. You know, I mean, I'm not talking about going out and spending a million dollars. You know, uh, if you have uh, help for the first 40 episodes of our show, we shot it at a kitchen table. All right, and we know every week we come in. This is where we sit. This is the angle of the shot. We have that stuff already mapped out. We don't have to redo anything. All right? wow. And then it helps your audience become familiar with it. So they know, okay, when the show starts, this is going to happen. And we've moved on since then to we're using green screens and composite and whatnot. And that's something Mike will talk about in the next, uh, next session in, in 201. But you want to have a, a good location to shoot at. Next, you need a computer or an iPhone. Because that's where you're going to do your editing. Something to edit on. Yes. Um, well, the new uh, let me put that's iPhone four because you can get the uh, iMovie for iPhone four, so you can actually shoot your your podcast on the iPhone in HD, edit it with the iMovie for it. It's not going to be as nice as if you do it in the iMovie on a computer or Crown PC. Get quick, dirty. Yeah. Sometimes there's also a lot of the cameras that you can get now have editing built in. So, bare minimum of what you're going to need is your idea, your camera, and some way to get it to the internet. But this stuff makes it a lot nicer. Especially this next one. Yes, your mic. People will tolerate bad video all day. They will not tolerate bad audio. If they can't hear what you're saying, or if it's crackling, breaking up, forget it. It's, it's done. Make sure that your audio always sounds great. Your video, can you can fudge on because people will excuse bad video quicker than they'll excuse bad audio. So they can't understand what you're talking about. You could have you know, 1080p awesome video HD and it sounds like it was recorded in a wind tunnel. Nobody's going to dig it. So your mic's very important. You can use an internal mic. We did that on... On, on quite a few of our episodes where yeah. we used the, the uh, mic that was in the camera. We've since moved to a, an external mic that we jack in. Uh, but And that sound quality has improved the quality of our podcast drastically. Yeah. It sounds so much better. It sounds so much warmer. Internal mics tend to sound tinny and you get a lot, of, especially if you shoot outside, get, you, know, you pick up every little breeze. Mm-hmm. Lights. Lights are huge. You gotta make sure no, they're, they're kinda of smaller. Once you get those, those are kind of big. Why don't you yeah. monitor tavern or something? <laughs> Lights are a big uh, are a big thing because the last thing you want is your subject, whatever you're shooting, to be dark. If it's dark and you can't see them, it we did a, a show early before this one, and some of you may have seen it, Restaurant Food Fast. And if you look at our first episode we shot it with almost no light. It is so bad. Uh, it is I terrible. Got and then we start. I mean, but that was part of the learning process. Okay, what's what do we do to make it better? Okay, we got to switch video. Stories. You want to see your subject? Yeah, it's that simple. <laughs> yeah. We were shooting a stove. We were doing a cooking show. Anyway, and then you want a camera or cameras, depending on your editing software. Uh, the the. The freebie software that you get with your Mac iMovie or you get with a PC uh, movie maker, they do one, one timeline at a time. Okay, So if you have multiple cameras, it gets really tricky to, to cut them in. It can be done, but it gets tricky. All right. So if you're going to have something, uh, for example, right now we don't do a whole lot with multiple cameras. We, have one, we shoot one camera and then we use screen flow to capture our, uh, our computer. Um, but then uh, 
when we were doing the cooking show, we used three cameras. We had a camera that was on the stove. We had a camera that, that was movable so that you could see what the, uh, the cook was doing. And then you had another camera that was on the tripod that was on us. Tripods are another nice thing to have because when you start getting this, my or people or people start. I'll change that. A tripod is a, a tripod is a mandatory thing. <laughs> but don't you know? Unless you are, you know, going to be wandering around shooting your documentary, forget it. You're not going to be standing there with your camera on your subject the entire time. It's not going to work out because your it, arm's going to get tired. You're going to start getting that shake in there. If it's something as simple as getting a table, putting a pillow on it, setting your camera on it, something. Just get a steady camera. Back away. Leave it alone. Use your eyesight camera. <coughs> Boop, done. You know that's part of the process. Is what are you going to be shooting? That's what goes back to your idea part, and that can help out as to what camera you're going to need. If you're going to be doing your little, po you know, your podcast and your screencast, you can get your screen flow and you can use your eyesight camera, a built-in mic. Done. You know, if you're going to be doing something a little bit more laid back, like our show, you want to have your camera out there, do your capturing for it, the mic. Different mics make a huge difference as Absolutely. well. Um, the if you want to go with lavalier clip-ons, if you want to go with omnidirectional, if you want to go with unidirectional, what you want to pick up for noise, you want to try to limit it to your subject. Yeah. Because I'm behind the camera. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> the mics, like like we said before, the mics are the most important part. And you can pick up mics wow, fairly, fairly cheap. You know, I mean, we use a uh, blue, s blue snowball microphone that I think was a hundred dollars, and we just upgraded to that because prior to that we used the internal mic that was on the camera. But it, it's one of them progression things. If you start getting into it and you start getting uh, hits and people start digging what you're doing, upgrade your equipment little by little. If you're making money. Go out and buy the real big ones, you know, get the real nice ones. If not, it, if you're going to be like pretty well, pretty much everybody that's in this field, start off small. You know, we started off with, in fact, I bought a $40 USB mic, and then we upgraded that to the Blue Snowball. Editing. Like Jeff said, you can do it in the camera or on an iPhone. If you shoot it on the iPhone, it's, you know, fairly. Got iMovie or. You got iMovie to edit it. It's not a super editing tool, but... Quick and dirty, get your job done. It'll get it done. Put it out. You know. Um, Again, that would go into what type of show you're doing. You're doing a little blog and you just want to put something quick out there. So basically you look at that as a Twitter of a blog. Go into quick, dirty, get it out there so you can get your post up. Yeah, or it, it, it would also work if you're at a at podcast. And you're a podcast, and you want to do a quick thing on, you know, a quick interview with uh, Justin, and you can just pull up a, a thing, shoot it, edit it real quick, and then send it out off with Quick or some other, or you can send it to Ustream or YouTube or any of those. Um, the next thing is Mac or PC. If you're ed doing any editing, you really want to do it on a because yes. <laughs> that gives you the ability to, to slow yourself down and, and make it look a little more, make it look much more professional. Right? You're, you're going to get decent quality out of a regular flip cam or whatever, but you really want to sit down and, and clean it up, clean up the audio, clean up the video. You know, edit out the, the part where you, you smacked your shin off something and you let out an explode. <laughs> expl uh, swear word. Bad word. <laughs> You don't want to leave, leave out bad words. So, on a PC, you can go from anywhere from Movie Maker to Premiere. Uh, and there's a huge price difference. Movie Maker's free, Premiere's about 500 bucks. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's the other the PC one? Final, uh, After Effects. Well, and now After Effects is actually another Adobe product that's for your special effects, compositing, that sort of thing. So, it's something to think about. You know, again, that would go back to your content. If you're doing a um, serialized or you know episodic thing, you might want to look at like After Effects, so that way you can go and you can add your little starbursts, you know, or your title scrolls, things like that that you can't do straight in Premiere because Premiere is just video editing. 
special effects, that's where After Effects comes in, where you're layering, you're compositing, that sort of thing. Two different programs, although you can use After Effects as a model editor. Yes? That's free uh, PC editor. I couldn't say I, I don't use PCs anymore. <laughs> I would say uh, <laughs> Movie Maker. Movie Maker, it, it, it's, it's, it's free. It's come with it. It's it, it, well, it doesn't come with it anymore. You've got to download it as oh. part of the live thing. But yeah, it, oh, it's, yeah. it's a very capable editor. Uh, but it's, it's not meant for a big project where if you have multiple cameras, you can only put one camera view in there at a time. And it, and it can get tricky to edit in that. But it is, it's very usable. Uh, it outputs in a WMV file, and basically that's a standard, so it can go anywhere. You can upload WMVs to YouTube. Okay. The thing whatever. is, to just get the free one, use it. You'll find out from there what you're looking for, what you you know you think you're gonna need. If you're you know if you're gonna continue on with this, because you might you know shoot your first you know half dozen episodes and go, ew, and decide you're not gonna do it anymore. So why spend all the money on the on the front of the hat? Actually, no. I, I think uh, iMovie can do a lot more okay. than Movie Maker, uh, but, the, but it's whether or not somebody has, I mean, if you already own a Mac, I, I, I'd recommend starting off an iMovie. You don't really don't want, and you really don't want to invest a whole lot of money, because you can get uh, Final Cut Express what for like 99 bucks. And then if you really, really kick it up and want to go up another notch, you can go to Final Cut Pro. Oh, go for Flaming Inferno. Come on. <laughs> From Final Cut Pro, you can get the, the whole suite. <coughs> What's iMovie's output, MP4? It can be either MP4. Yeah, I think it is MP4. It's MP4. It doesn't have a uh, MOV option as well. It may have an MOV. I, I, it's got a domain memory. Yeah, it, yeah, basically, if it can well, be played in quick maker, time, you can put it out in night. You can't go to MP4. You have to no. get a file. Movie Maker's only WMV, and then you got to convert it after the file. Yeah. That's the Yeah, that, again, PC versus Mac, that's... But if, if, if that's what yeah, you have, We're not wanting to what start the PC versus Mac war. That, that's what we're talking about. Both, uh, both of them are, are very capable in doing this. Some end up being a little bit easier. Uh, the Mac stuff tends to be, well, in my opinion, because I do a Mac show, the, to me, the Mac's a little bit easier to use. You know, results may vary. And once again, for the Mac, iMovie, anywhere from iMovie to Final yeah. Cut Pro, like I said, Final Cut Express will allow you to do multiple tracks, but I think it's only, it, it limits you to two. Yeah. Uh, so, but if you're using multiple cameras, it's real nice to stack, and it's a linear editor. Lighting. We said lighting is huge. Three-point lighting is preferred. And what three-point lighting is, is... <laughs> three-point lighting. Here's the subject. Three-point lighting, you're going to have a key light, so here, pointing at it. That's going to be your brightest one. Generally, bright if you don't have... If you all have 60-watt bulbs in, like, all of your lights, if you're going to be doing something like this, put it closer, and he's brighter. Makes sense. Uh, next one is be what's called the fill light. That's generally on the opposite side of them. So you don't have a shadow on half of their face. Well, actually, you want the shadow on the side of the face, but you don't want black, you know, yeah. unless you're going for film noir or this sort of thing. But what that's going to do is that's going to fill in the side, so it's going to actually brighten up any of the shadow areas uh, on that side of the face. And that's going to be a generally a lower wattage bulb, or the light's going to be farther away to, you know, so it's not just one. So this side of the face and this side of the face aren't the same. So you actually have a tonal difference. And then you have what's called the fill light, which is going to be a light behind them. Oh, to me, backlight. Shut up. Shut up. That one is, going, is what's used to break your um, subject from the background. So if you have somebody with like a dark shirt and you have a dark background, standard um, setup, they're gonna blink blending into the background. With a backlight, that's gonna put that little halo around the edge that you see on a lot of TV shows, movies, and whatnot. So it kind of breaks them apart so you, they're not part of the background. They actually stand apart from it. You don't have to do all of these. You can do one light. You know, if you want to go on to like the next thing. Um, but those are the you know ideal things. Minimum, you just want to light your thing. Turn on your table lamp, sit in front of your thing, have your eyesight on, and start talking. You know, 
You just want to be able to see your thing. Ideally, if you're going to have time to set up a shot, you know, you're going to go for a little bit higher production value. That's what you're going to shoot for. We only have two lights and a couple of windows. Uh, the reason we don't have any backlight is because of space restrictions on ours. So you have to take into consideration where you're shooting as to what type of light you're going to be a lot, you know, capable of having. Natural light versus artificial light. You know, natural light is going to be the best. Okay. Has anybody ever seen Command Eye with uh, Amber MacArthur? They shoot all their, their pre, uh, what's, it, what's it, like the, the pre production? The, well, the pre, before they actually get into what they're talking about, they shoot outside. Their and, yeah, I guess. But they shoot it outside so you get the natural sunlight. Natural sunlight's always better, well, normally better. There are cases where not shooting not outside is really better. Possible. Yeah. You know, because you can't control what the sun's going to be doing today. You know, it's going to be cloudy or not. Um, modifying your lights. This kind of goes to, you know, if you're going to do the three point, even the natural. With natural light, you have one, say you have one light source, the sun. But you still want to have a fill light for your target because it's like really dark on the side. You can actually use reflectors, and that can be something as simple as you get your car anti-sunscreen, you know, it's got that big silver side, you just grab that thing, you get a camera or whatever for like five bucks, you stand to the side, you reflect the light back on the side of the person, and it fills in the side, so you can kind of fake it out, you know, so you don't actually have to have three-point lighting, you can still get away with not having it. Gels, filters, high-end if you want to get into it, so if you want to have, you know, gauzy effect, uh, generally if you want that soft effect, that's just like a nylon stretch over you know, some of the, uh, to, to be honest, the, 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 fil the, the filters that we use. Well, first off, we started off with, with the high end filters, you know, standard. It's cheap paper. paper. Um, pick them up, you know. Yeah, you buy 500 pack, 500 five pack. bucks. Yeah. Uh, then we, I'm actually right now using parchment paper. Uh, I'm using wax paper um, currently. Just because uh, it, it does, that way the light is still there, but it's not as harsh. Yeah, because it's if you use a straight ball on somebody, you get those nice big bright spots on whenever they're, they're sweating. You know, I'm sure we have a few of those yeah. right now. Whereas if you put any kind of filter over the light, like I said, even just a standard piece of copy paper, that's going to blow the light out so you don't get those nice bright hot spots. So everything's kind of more even across. And if anybody has any questions on if I'm rambling, I got a question, you're rambling. If not, what, what would you recommend if you're um Um, daytime, nighttime, because if it any any kind of nighttime shoots, you're gonna have to be able to provide your own light. So you can use anything. Okay, indoor. Um, if you know there's going to be adequate lighting there, you may want to consider just making sure that you have like a reflector card or something, something so you can bounce light back. Um, it doesn't have to be like the silver reflectors. You can actually get away with a big piece of white cork work or. Um, bulletin board sort of material. As long as it, it, it can bounce the light back off. But generally you want to stick with white. Uh, because anything else you can have is going to be bouncing. It's going to be picking whatever color is up off of it. So you don't want to use a blue because you guys are going to have any blue now. Um, also you may want to pick up a couple of better, you know, handheld you know, flashlights or something. And you can cover them. Get like some of the high powered halogens. If you think there may not be enough light in the area, because you can have somebody sit like that. Again, if you're going to be, you know, moving around, that's one thing. Somebody can hold it, but preferable, you always want to be able to have it be held somewhere. That's where the tripods come in, rubber bands, alligator clips, something to hold it in place. In fact, our lights are, you know, you've seen them things that you can get them at any. In fact, we bought them at Lowe's for like five bucks. You know, it's just it's right. just silver yeah. can ones with the alligator clip on it. We take those, boop, clip on top of a uh, couple tripod. of tripods. Nice thing about those, you, they're cheap, so if you don't want to break it, eh, pick up another one. Plus, you can move it around and direct where you need it. Yes? What wattage do you use? 60? I have 100 watts in mine. That's canned lights? Yep. Because I actually, 
there, that's one thing to be careful of when you're act, if you're going for something like that. Read the label and see what's the maximum wattage you can have. You still don't, you don't want to go over for things like this because that's why I use parchment paper because it's got a high flash point. Um, and then you can you know maximize that. I look at it as I can go with a higher wattage because I can always back up my light you know to reduce it, or I can put more filters on it to reduce the amount of light. So I always prefer to have as much light in my source as possible. And then I can always reduce it as opposed to, damn, I really wish I had another five watts off of this thing to, you know, okay. light my target. You can't increase it. It's easier to, to, to cut it back. How do you attach the wax paper to the clothespins? Clothespins. Yep. I got, I got <laughs> clothespins. Put those on there. Uh, to be honest, for the, if when we were using just a regular copy paper, fold it down like a half inch, just set it on top. As long as there's no fan going, it works fine. We have moved it. We had moved the clothespins once we started around the fans because it got hot. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last thing is white balance. Make sure you can always, 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 you know, if you forget any of this stuff, you know, you got your lighting stuff, always white balance. Does anybody not know what white balancing is? Okay. White balancing, a lot of cameras still have a, you can have a set for a default white balance. But what it does is you're shooting in here today, and then say you shoot your video outside. Two completely different things. You have fluorescent versus natural light. Natural lighting, you get full color spectrum. Fluorescent lighting, it's restricted. You're not going to be getting here. It's going to have uh, purples and blues, so the colors won't match. That's why when you look at uh, videos on the web, everybody's yellow. You know, you know, everybody's seen those. That's because somebody didn't white balance. What you do is you have a big white card or something big and white, and you put your camera at it, and you say, click. And you have to read on your camera to find out where the white balance settings are. And that tells it that color is white. No matter what the lighting is, that color is white. And then it can adjust everything accordingly. Now you go outside, you put your white card up, click. Now it knows that's white. So white is always white. And then it can pick up the rest of the color spectrum from there. That's why your, then your colors inside, outside, fluorescent, tungsten, whatever, will match up. They should. Um, that's one thing to look into. That's, I, I'll put it this way. I've never had a camera that didn't have it. Um, I generally pick higher end cameras, though. With the flip phones, a lot of them are going to have a an automatic. So some of the cameras will have an automatic white balance. And you just need to read into the manuals like how to use that. But like I said, or that how to set white balance. Yeah. And some of them actually have presets. So it's like, okay, if you're using tungsten, you can click on the tungsten if you're going to be using natural light, you know, and, and it'll have the preset so you don't have to go in and re actually, you know, have a card to do a white balance off of. Um, the other thing about if you're going to be white balancing, set your lighting up first and then do your white balance because otherwise you can get some very odd results. Any other questions for you get going on? Alright, distribution. There's a ton. There's a ton of, everybody knows how, where it's they it. see, yeah, everybody knows where they see their videos at. You can check out YouTube. YouTube just up their, their uh, input to a 15 minute video limited in one gig. All right. Which is nice because 10 minutes stunk. Anything I wanted to do was always like 11 minutes and I couldn't cut nothing else out of it. So 15 minutes is nice. Uh, especially if you're playing with it and you want to learn, YouTube is a great place to learn because they don't charge you f for uploading video. That, I mean, that you can post it to the web. You can see what your audience is going to see, and it, and it's and it's really cool. And then you can call up, you know, I can call Hutch and say, Hey, Hutch, check out my video. Tell me what you think. It you know, sucks. yeah, it sucks. What's wrong with you? But on YouTube, it doesn't cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you anything to get. I mean, that's the thing that you want is feedback. As a podcast producer, I would I want to know, dude, what you did sucked. What were you thinking? I want that because that's how I'm going to improve. That's how I'm going to get better. People think, well, I'm not going to leave them a comment because I thought it stunk. Tell me it stinks. T tell me, it, or if you like it, tell me you like it. What did you like about it? Because I'm gonna, that's going to help me make a better show for you. 
and you can't, you got to get thick skin because you're going to get people that are going to just bomb on you because you're on the internet. Trolls. There, there's trolls that are going to, no matter what you do, they're going to hate it. Fine. Get a thick skin and you say, you know what? I got 500 people that dig what I'm doing. You don't. Apparently, you just don't get it. 500 other people do. So, target anyway. audience. <laughs> Vittler's another nice one. Vimo, our sponsor. Uh, no, it's not Vimo. It's Vivo. Vivo. Our sponsors here. Uh, Vittler's another free one. It's nice. I use Blip TV for our show. Uh, Blip is also a sponsor here. Uh, and I don't use them because they're a sponsor here. I use them because I've, we've been using them for, what, five years? Yeah. And they're awesome. They allow you to cross post. You can, you know, you can upload your video one time. Tell it, I want it to go to YouTube. I want it to go to Blip or uh, to Blogger. I want it to go to WordPress. I want it to go to iTunes. Okay, so why do you use Blip over Where? YouTube? I use Blip over YouTube because Blip, I can put it up the biggest file I want. I mean, some of our episodes have gone up to 45 minutes. Blip takes it. So there's no there's no size restriction. You can uh, monetize with it. It'll allow you to add uh, pre-roll advertisement. I've we've been doing this for five years, and we've made two dollars and forty-three cents from advertising for Blip. And they don't send you a check till you hit 25 bucks. So within the next 50 years, we're hoping to get a check. Uh, that, the the bottom line, to be honest with you, is there anything else I have on here? Yeah, one more. Yeah, there's many, many more. Really? The the bottom line is, if you really like what you're doing and you're really passionate about it, don't think about I'm going to make money, because you're not. You're not going to make money out of the game. Leo Laporte does it because he has a nationwide radio show that he pimps his stuff on. Until you have that ability. You're not going to get that kind of traffic initially. Now, word of mouth, you start building a product that people like, they're going, to, they're going to gravitate to you and they're going to tell their friends. That's how social networking works. Because it's, I can tell Hutch, hey Hutch, check this out. I just saw Lisa's uh, video and I think it's pretty cool. Hutch is going to tell somebody, they're going to tell somebody. Word of mouth, you know, they're going to Twitter it. They're going to put it on Facebook. They're going to, that's how, and, and that's how the community grows. All right? You, you really don't want to, you know, okay, I, I made a video, and it's a, it's a show about Max, and I'm going to put it up, and that's all I'm going to do. Nobody's ever going to hear about it. You've got to be willing to get on Twitter, to get on Facebook, to get on any social media that you can find talk about it. Come to PodCamp. Talk to people. Hey, this is my show. Talk about what you're doing. What's your show again? Uh, my show is Max and Life. Okay. It's at MaxandLife.com. And Twitter is at Max and Life. Anyway. You have an iPhone app? And I have an iPhone app. Thanks to Hutch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the folks at Wizard will build you a, 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 they built an app for us for free. Uh, they get a third of the profits. And I think they've made 15 cents. But that's neither here nor there. What's that service called? Uh, we did it through Wizard. Yeah, sir. Two Z's? Yeah, I think it's two Z's. W-I-Z-Z-A-R-D. Yeah, know. they'll do it. It's like they have, there's a, you can't get a free one from them. Though. There's a minimum of 199 but they take care of it. They give you a full pamphlet and stuff. Yeah, they, they do all the billing nice. and whatnot. Hey, talk to us after the show. We'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Um, when you upload to Blip mm -hmm. TV, No. Uh, YouTube will only take a max of 15 minutes. So it doesn't matter. Up, if you put it on Blip TV, how do you cross? I don't, use, I don't use YouTube as my cross. That's what it is. Because we have our website, and then I have another website on Blogger with the same name. I have another website on WordPress with the same name. Uh, and iTunes. So when I, when I initially post it, I say, okay, once you're done, because it, it'll take it, it uploads it, converts it to Flash, and then it'll go and cross post to all my other sites. So you only have to post once. I post once and tell your, it to go. All your, okay, that's good. Yeah, and what's cool about it is Blip will keep your stats for you. 
It's not. Track. It's, it's not a super stat tracker. It's not the same thing that you would get, for example, from, from Google Analytics. Analytics. But it'll tell you you got this many hits. This many were from iTunes. This many were from Blogger. This many. So you can still keep a, a fairly good idea of how many people have downloaded your show. Whereas Analytics will tell you they hit your page. They don't tell you what they did. Blip will tell you will tell you that they hit your page, but they'll say you had this many downloads from here. Now, if you want to get really intense, you can go to something like FeedBurner and and start with FeedBurner. FeedBurner will tell you what countries they came from. But it's really really hard that that goes into your pre planning. It's really hard to start with one and say, okay, I'm going to keep everything on Blip, and now I want to go to FeedBurner. Now I have to tell everybody who's already downloading my episodes to switch their RSS to FeedBurner, and it's really not that easy. So you can't cross on those? You can if you start initially. Okay. If, when you start, you start with a FeedBurner RSS. You can put that FeedBurner RSS on Blip. You'll still see the downloads there, but then FeedBurner also does some monitoring for you too. Anything else? How large is a 45-minute show, and how long would it take to upload? Uh, the 45-minute show was 540 meg, and it took, well, it takes about an hour to upload, and then it takes about an hour and a half to convert, where they convert it to Flash. <coughs> but then once it converts to Flash, when it does its distribution. Most of the, you know, and that way... Your, where you're distributing it to aren't actually downloading and holding the file for you, Blip still holds it. And it's just a, f a feedback to it. So if they watch it on my website, they click the, the, the button on my website, they get the Flash one from Blip. But if they go to iTunes and download it, they get the M4V. Or, yeah, M4V. Mm -hmm. so what's the resolution of that, though? Uh... Why are you asking me this? Uh, 640 by 480. Well, I'm asking actually for them because well, you know, it makes a difference. Yeah, it does make a difference. You know, it's, it's 640 by 240. By 240. Actually, but it's got to be bigger than that because it's 16 9 aspect ratio. No, it's 640 by 480. That's probably what we can do with more. Yeah, what setting do you use on that? I have a 16 9 uh, uh, 1080p, is what I shoot in. Yeah, that, well, yeah. That, you know, you can use whatever you want, and all just effects as to what your final output is. Me, I'm all about the video, so that's why I demand we use 16.9 and make his life a living hell. Yeah, because it, it irritates me because I got 4x3 and 16x9 and I'm trying to stretch stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, get in the back and green. Yeah, um, let's say you uploaded your videos to Blip TV and get to YouTube if it's too long, let's say because YouTube has limited 10 minutes. Yes, <laughs> it can. If you have, it, it, it'll actually fail. It'll come back and give you, a, I couldn't do it. That, that's because Blip will, I mean, uh, YouTube will reject it. Yeah, that comes into your pre-planning. So you, if you if you plan on having it go there, do your editing down before you. Uh, Make sure it's less than 15 play. minutes. Go ahead. Nope. Excellent. Any sort of like live streaming services that almost do? Like, I don't even know if this exists. I'm not understanding Oh, yeah. So if you got two people with webcams that will split screen for you, you can live stream. I mean, what you'd have to, the, the way I would do it would be you'd have to do something like uh, using ScreenFlow on a Mac uh, and then do it through like iChat or Skype. And then you can pump both of those into a file and, and send it out through Ustream TV or Justin or whatever. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, let's do a camera and get started with that. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of people have been talking about the Canon ZI8. Yes. Canon yeah. or Kodak? It was Kodak. 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 The ZI8. The ZI8. Mike uh, Sewer that is probably going to talk about weekend. that if you go to 201. Uh, well, no, Mike wasn't the big one on it. was uh, Sewer. I mean, I mean uh, Father Spoon. Yeah, well, he was going on about it, but then Mike was all here because yeah. he had, it's like, different people have it. Um, they're, they have it because that one, they said that was actually one of the nice things about so you could hook up an external microphone. Um, I personally, Ken, what was it? Ken, what were the numbers? Z1-8? Uh, it was Kodak. Z I, yeah, Kodak ZI-8. Uh, I believe it was 
that was recommended yesterday. This is the one we use to shoot our uh, our cooking show. Well, one of the ones. One of the ones because we had two cameras, and this is just a little Panasonic SDR. The reason that I like this camera is because I'm the editor, and because it has an SD card, I can pop the card out, pop it in. I don't have to watch the video twice before I edit because you shoot it with a, a one of the older fashioned DV cameras, right? You shoot it, then you have to plug in a firewire cable, plug it into your computer, and then you have to watch it again as it imports. And then that takes, you know, you shoot an hour's worth of video, you got to sit there for an hour and watch it import. And it was just a nightmare. So we, when we, when the price of the SD cameras came down, we went out, and I bought this one, Jeff bought a bigger... I got the Samsung. He got the Samsung. Um, but don't ask me the model, I can't tell you, because <laughs> it, was, it was discontinued, so I got it for about a third of the normal price. So I got it for a really good deal. And but, but that, to me, that's key. Make sure you can, so you don't have to watch it twice. The SD, you know, with an SD card, little USB SD reader, bump, bump, done. And you just dump the file. For camera selection, a couple of things to look into. I said, look into that one. What format is it? You know, if it's yeah. three, four aspect ratio, 16 by nine, what's the maximum resolution, minor things. The things to look for are how are you getting it from the camera to your computer. More often than not, now you're just gonna be getting an SD. Thing to be careful on uh, some cameras, they have a proprietary video format that they use. Sony is really bad. So you have to take that card, put it in your computer, now use their software, convert it over into something else, and then grab another converter to convert it into something you can actually use without having to use their software. So you want to look at the types that it, um, it'll output for. Uh, ours, for instance, because the one I the one I got I got it specifically because it, it'll put out as a uh, import fee for. Ah. I got Morty syndrome um, file, okay. so it has a video file format that will go straight into our editing software without really having to do anything. So something to look into is to you know that take that into consideration when you're choosing your. What your output's going to be? Also look at the optics. What's the best output for watching on a phone? To watch on a phone. Um, Depends on the phone? Yeah, it would depend on the phone. Your iPhone 720p is generally considered the maximum resolution you're going to be getting for one. Uh, for most most cameras, uh, most phones don't even have that resolution. Um, the new the iPhones resolutions are, no, the new don't. iPhones are do 720. They'll play back at 720, but they won't play back at 720p. Their resolution, they're, they're at a uh, 960 by 480 resolution, um, whereas a 720p resolution is 1280 by 720. No camera phone has that. They'll be able to play it, but they're actually downscaling it. So. If you're going to be shooting, I would look at, if you're looking to do go for across the board everything, look at shooting like at a 720p resolution. It'll work for virtually everything out there. If you restrict it to a 1080p, yeah, if it, you're, it's that was one of the, the, the gotchas that we had on your camera we to our new, our, uh, for our iPhone app. Because the, the yeah. older stuff that we had done, we did with a... Uh, at a higher resolution, so it rejected a lot of it. So I found that I had to use 640 by 480 M M4Vs, and since I started doing that, it works fine on the phone, and it works fine on my iPad, on the computer, the whole nine yards. So and that, to me, that's the the perfect. Now, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Don't write down that I said that this is the exact one to use, oh, no, but. Yeah, but uh, 640 Cause by... Because I, I would disagree with you. Uh, 640 <laughs> by 480 works for everything that we do because then that way you're getting a bigger spectrum. You know, you're not just catering to the iPhone people. So if somebody has an Android, they'd still be able to see it. Uh, so that's that's kind of the way I look at it. I I, I go for the... Con to where I'm going to get the most eyeballs. Yeah, we could probably do it in 720p and make it really intense. And there might be a handful of people that are able to play it back. So I opt for using a lower resolution and getting more eyeballs. And that's just the way I think. Yes. Uh, how do I like, research video podcasts to try to find examples of people who are doing what I sort of want to do? Okay. There's one that Hutch recommends. It's Podcast Pickle. And you can find video on there. Uh, you can do, just look it up in iTunes. Uh, 
that's a, that's a good point though. If you're making video, see what other people are doing. You know, see see what looks successful. Seriously, you know, it, what kind of format, you know, do they do? Because our we were just talking about this. Our show has a standard format, and that's part of what we want our viewers to see. Is they know that when they turn our show on, we're going to do the news, then we're going to take a break, then we're going to come back and do a free fall, and then we're going to do or a how to, and that's going to end the show. That's our format. See if you like that format. I mean, that might be something that you're into. You know, like I said, nobody's going to be able to duplicate what Laporte does. So don't even try that. Now, you might like the format of the show. You can adopt that Copy format. format. Yeah, there's nothing that says you can't use that format over here. Right? So we're pretty much out of time. Go ahead. What, what, when you do this talk next year, what will you be saying about the new Twitter? The new Twitter. <laughs> uh, Predictions for a year. To, to, to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of branding. And if I can brand on anything, you're going to see me on it. You're going to see Max and Life on Twitter. You're going to see us on Facebook. You're going to see us on, what's the new one? What's the, somebody in the room? The Dispora? The new Facebook knockoff thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to be on that too. I mean, <laughs> if, if you can be somewhere, be there. There's nothing, I mean, that just gets your brand out. That gets people talking about it. <coughs> Whether they talk positively or negatively, somebody's going to talk Somebody's going to talk about it. And that's my goal. I, I enjoy doing the, the editing the video. That's, my, that's, to me, the fun part, and posting and distributing it. Then this, the, the part that becomes work is telling you guys about it. That's actually the harder part for me because that's why he gets to do it. Yeah, and that's why I get to do it, because I'm shy. I'm basically a shy person, as you can tell. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. We're, we're, we're about two minutes over, so. Oh, everybody else goes over. Yeah, anybody else have any questions, confused by anything we said? <laughs> I have I have looked at that. I have looked at Uva. It's pretty. It, it, it's pretty yeah. Cool. Pretty cool. When we were talking about cameras, I like to recommend the Kodak PlaySport. When I went to go buy my camera, I would look at the CIA. What made me choose the PlaySport is what I was shooting. Is if my kids knocked it out of my hand, if it got in the water, it is waterproof. It yeah. is also rough. It has a rough exterior. So if I do hiking videos, sure. I like the fact that I can drop it in a creek. And it survives. Well, yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's exactly uh, part of what I was saying. Is you're, we can't tell you to use this camera because it, it would be ingenuous. I couldn't. I can't tell you because I would never even in my head go. I might take this thing hiking, yeah. or I might take this yeah, thing out in the woods that's because not our show. we shoot in in a room in my house. Yeah. So to me, any camera will work. But you're exactly right. If you were to take it to a creek or whatever. You definitely want something ruggedized. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for everybody for coming. We got cards up here.